hello, hello. I am Chef Ann Burrell, and today we are making lamb chops. I love a lamb chop. I have to say, Chef Annie had a little lammy, and it was so delicious. So lamb chops, rack of lamb, kind of a decadent sort of dinner. I mean, lamb is expensive, and you know, sometimes when people are thinking, oh, what should I make for you know a high-end kind of fancy dinner at my house, because lamb is a little bit expensive, people might not feel super comfortable cooking it at home by themselves. So let's just take care of that right now and get to the bottom of this lamb chop deliciousness. So I've got about five sprigs of rosemary that I am picking off the stem. So you can hold it by the top of the sprig and just pull these guys off backwards. Now, if you see any woody stems, you can go ahead and pick sort of the needles off of these guys. Rosemary is one of these herbs that we call sort of a hard herb. Like you have to chop these guys really finely. Eating one of these needles in and of itself, really way too pungent, way too strong. So I have five sprigs of rosemary that I'm going to chop feeny, feeny, feeny. And I'm gonna make a little sort of like rosemary, garlic, lemon, oil, olive oil -y thing to uh, season my lamb chops with. Hello, beautiful. Mm. So when I chop herbs or something like this, I really, first of all, make sure that my knife is very, very sharp because we wanna chop through the herbs and not just crash down on top of them to bruise them. This smell just coming off of this little pile of rosemary here is absolutely just mouthwateringly delicious. I love it. There we go. When I'm chopping herbs, I make sure I keep them in a really small area. And I put my other hand on the tip of my knife and I pivot back and forth. Pivot, pivot. Pivot, right, there we go. And we wanna make sure that we chop all of this evenly and when we see it start to spread out a lot, we gather it back together in a small area and we keep changing directions so that we make sure that we get every little single bit of this guy. There we go. <clears throat> Smells so good in here. All right, so I have a little bowl that I'm going to put all of my, I guess we could call this a marinade. So, rosemary, I have four cloves of garlic. Now, when we're talking about garlic, I always recommend buying garlic in this form. Don't buy peeled garlic, please. Don't buy already chopped garlic in uh, olive oil. Those just don't taste the same. We want that beautiful, sheer garlic deliciousness. We don't want someone else to have done it for us because it makes a big effect on what happens with our garlic flavor. So I take my clove of garlic, I put my knife right on it, and I give it a little whack. We're gonna do all four cloves. All right, and so now look at this. We've broken the paper and the paper and the skin flies right off our garlic clove. Easy peasy, we have our thank you for coming bowl. So when this is full, we take it over to the garbage and empty it out. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna cut off the little stem end of these guys. There we go. Now we say thank you for coming. Now we're gonna cut our garlic cloves in half, the long way. And I'm gonna look inside and I'm gonna see if I see any like little green sort of sprouty things in there. I'm gonna take those out. It's the garlic just that's re-sprouted. It happens every once in a while. It could make your dish bitter. I mean, this little thing in the large scheme of your lamb chops is not gonna wreck anything, but it doesn't help it either. So thank you for coming. All right, now this Ah, this is where we have some fun in the kitchen. This is where we're like, I own this situation. So put your garlic clove down, put your knife right on the edge of it and make sure your fingers are off the edge of your board and get in there and own it. Yeah! We wanna smash these garlic cloves. Smash them. Smash them like you mean it. I'm hitting with the part of my hand, the, the heel of the palm of my hand. This seems much more dramatic than it actually is. But what we are actually doing here, hang on, let me just get done smashing. Let me enjoy this for a second. Gets out my pent up aggressions. 
Yes. <clears throat> Smells delicious. All right, now I'm gonna give these a little bit more of a chop. So the whole point of smashing our garlic clove, it smashes all the cells of those garlic. It allows the oils to come out of the garlic and we really get all of the garlic goodness. So we think about a garlic press, you put your garlic in there, your garlic clove, you know, you lose half the volume of your garlic, you have to dig your finger around in there, there's more dishes, just smash it and get your aggressions out. <clears throat> Be large and in charge. All right, so smashed and finely chopped. This is gonna go right in with my rosemary. All right, now, I'm going to put the zest of two lemons in with my little marinade here. I've got my microplane or my very fine grater. So it's a few little sweeps. Once you get down to the pith or the part where it's white, stop. It's bitter and it tastes like crap. So just keep going around and around the outside of our lemon and Oh, we have a lemony, garlicky, rosemary goodness happening for our, our lamb chops. All flavors that go together so beautifully. And then I'm going to save this zested lemon because I want the juice to dress a salad later on. Ooh, look at me, always thinking. One lemon zested, one more to go. All right, beauty. Mmm. Smells so good. This is making me hungry already. Alrighty. Okay. There we go. Gorge. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Now about a quarter of a cup of olive oil in here. There we go. I'm gonna mix this up. We're gonna add a pinch of crushed red pepper, a little spicy poke, why not? All right, now we're gonna let this hang out until we're ready to use it. Now, let's talk lamb chops. Okay, so two racks of lamb. I have damp paper towels. I am putting them underneath my cutting board. Check this out. Now it doesn't slide anymore. It's like a no slip slide situation. I don't wanna be butchering my lamb chops and have my board fly away, that's dangerous. So, racks of lamb, I mean expensive. These are an investment. This is like, all right, I'm gonna make a fancy, fancy dinner, let's make lamb chops. A rack of lamb comes with eight bones. So we could make eight lovely thin little chops. I'm an eater. I like to eat more than that. So what I'm going to do, rather than eight really thin chops, I'm gonna make six chops that are a little bit thicker. So when we look at this, we're gonna look at our chops and we look at, all right, this bone right here, really close together between these bones. So I'm gonna just do a little bonectomy. I'm gonna take this out very carefully with the tip of my knife. We go right around. We're not cutting into the meat at all. So I'm just taking this one little bone out. Say hi, thank you for coming. Now, we look at these two guys, and we're saying, okay, so this we're gonna cut into two chops, so look at that. So there we go. That's two like pretty nice kind of thick chops. So now out of the rest of this, we wanna cut four more chops. So I'm thinking right in here, I'm gonna cut this one out as well. There we go. Just the tip of your knife. Really be very careful. You don't wanna cut into the big money item, which is this eye of the meat here. This is, you know, that's the, that's the money. So let's not hurt it. All right, very gently. There we go. All right, bone number two removed. So then, look at this, we've got, all right. Here we go, that's four chops, and then we're gonna go into here. 
and two more chops. So now look at this. That is a lamb chop. There we go. So let's do this with one more. Okay, so I'm looking at these guys. I'm looking at these three bones where I'm saying, okay, these guys are really close together. Let's take this middle one out. All right, very carefully. The tip of the knife. There we go, thank you for coming. So let's cut this into two beautiful, nice sort of thickish chops. There we go, now let's look at these two guys. Let's take this guy out. Okay, thank you for coming. Now, here we go. Let's cut this into two really nice thick chops. And we'll cut this last piece into two thick chops. So, now we have 12 beautiful lamb chops. Nice thick ones. Gorgeous. All right. So, now let's salt these guys. So, when we're talking about cooking meat, let's think about it for a second. If we come straight out of the fridge and go into a screaming hot saute pan, what is our meat gonna do? It's just gonna get stressed out. And what happens when things get stressed out? From one extreme to another makes things tense up and get tough and tight. That's what happens if we go straight from the fridge into a screaming hot saute pan. So if we allow things to get like nice and relaxed, our meat will cook much more evenly. It will be easier to cook them to temperature. Just the whole shoot and match becomes a much nicer affair. So we are seasoning our lamb chops generously with salt. Notice I'm seasoning it up very high so I can sprinkle the salt throughout my fingers and get a nice even coating of salt on our lamb chops. So I mean, it's like if I put that much salt right there, it's the same amount of salt as going like this, but unfortunately that bite would be way too salty and there wouldn't be any salt on the rest of our lamb chops. So when we're seasoning meat in general, season it up high and let it fall from between your fingers. Work them like this. We've got to turn these guys over. We're going to let these guys sit here because two things are happening. One, they're coming to room temperature, which we are saying that we're looking for. Uh huh. And what salt does is it starts to pull the moisture out, the beautiful meat juices that are in these guys. And what happens is you get a lovely little coating of salt and meat juice on the outside of your chops that when we brown the crap out of them over here, those, the salt and the meat juices create a beautiful brown crust on the outside of our lamb chops. And what do I say about brown food? Brown food tastes good. Yes, it does. So I really feel passionate about brown food. All right. So there we go. Lamb chops butchered and ready to go. So now with this salt on there, I'm going to kind of get my lamb chops like, in fact, let's use a little brush for this guy. I'm going to brush my lamb chops with this delicious olive oil, rosemary, lemon zest, and crushed red pepper mix. Mm. Yes, oh, it smells so good. This makes me a happy, happy girl. I mean, I have to say, I would jump out there and say, lamb is probably one of my favorite meats. Like, people are like, oh, I like a big fat steak. And yes, I like a steak too, but I have to say, lamb chops, probably my favorite. So if you get to a point like this and you're like, oh geez, you know, I have too much chunky stuff and not enough olive oil, just add more oil. It's not that big of a whoop. You know, get it all right in there. We really want to slather the lamb chops with all this deliciousness. Already we're like, mmm, that looks delicious. Okay, so let's turn these guys over and do the same thing. All 
right, let's give them a little brush. Mm -hmm. oh, I just got a little whiff of that lemony goodness. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I love to teach people how to do because this is absolutely 1,000% doable at your house. And when you do this and you follow these directions, you become a rock star. And then you feel the same sort of joy that I feel cooking and providing for people that I love and care about. You feel you will feel the same thing at your house. All right, lamb chops standing by and are ready. I'm gonna give my hands a little wash. All right, so I have a big saute pan. I'm going to heat it up. Is that the right one? Yes, it is. All right, so saute pan, a decent amount of olive oil in here. All right, we're gonna brown our lamb chops. Like we really want them beautiful and brown on the outside. So we are gonna put a hard sear on these. So we're gonna put them in the pan. I'm gonna put enough lamb chops in to make a nice even layer, but I'm not going to crowd the pan. If I crowd the pan, rather than my lamb chops getting brown and crispy, what will happen is they will get gray and they will steam in there. So everybody needs room to live, right? Just like our lamb chops need room. Everyone needs their own space. So I put my olive oil in my pan before my pan is even heated up. Why? Well, I can't tell how hot my pan is by looking at it, but I certainly can tell how hot my pan is by how the oil behaves in there. So I put my olive oil in the pan when my pan is cool or just starting to warm up. The oil kind of rolls around in a sort of sleepy, sluggish fashion. The more my oil heats up, the less viscous it becomes. So it moves around the pan, it gets like thinner, and it's like it moves around the pan much more quickly. So we see this, and I can also tell how hot my pan is by, I can see a little smoke starting to come off of there eventually. And if I give it a little shake, I can see sort of like the wave and the convection on the bottom of the pan. I can't see it yet, and I don't see any smoke coming off, the, off of my pan, so, I'm gonna wait. Now, if you're not sure how hot your pan is or if your oil's hot and you're like, do I see the little shimmy in the wave on the bottom of the pan? I don't know, I don't know. There is one other test that you can do and this is it. Take whatever it is that you're gonna cook in this hot oil that you wanna get a nice brown coating on the outside and touch it to the pan. Do you hear, ah like a rambunctious applause, like Bruno Mars is in the house, like is Bruno Mars at the garden tonight? Eh, like it's still the warm up band. So wait, give it a chance to heat up and let it do it, let it do its thing. Uh, all right, almost there. All right, we're gonna start with, we'll go with one. Now we're gonna let our pan heat up a little bit more. I don't know, see, I'm not quite there yet, so, but I'm gonna let this guy hang out for a second. And before I get going, see, like, is that brown food? No, that's gray food. Ooh, did I start to hear rambunctious applause? Ah, there we go. All right, so. Now, we're gonna let these guys sear. The first thing that, as cooks, that we wanna do when we put stuff in our pan is move it. The first thing this wants to do is stick there, resist the urge, let it do its thing. Now, if you see eventually, as we're cooking and this pan is like, you know, on a high, high heat, if you see your pan starting to turn colors around the outside or too, too much smoke is coming out of it, or if, you're, if your chops or whatever it is you're trying to brown on the outside is getting too dark too fast or you don't like the color of darkness, Turn your burner down. They adjust for a reason. I mean, I am always a cook that loves a low-tech solution. So I promise you, please use it. 
There we go. So let's take a look at our first one. Are we starting to see brown food? Yes, we are. Are we seeing brown food? Not yet. So we're gonna wait. And we make sure that there's plenty of room in between each chop to allow the moisture to escape so our chops will brown and not steam. We can probably fit one more in right there. There we go. Mmm, smelling nice and lamby and delicious. So once my chops are brown, oh, is that brown food? Yes, it is. So we're gonna turn that guy over. All right, we're gonna brown all of these. See, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. All right, we're gonna work in batches and we're gonna brown these on both sides. So then we're gonna go back on this tray and we're gonna shoot these guys in the oven at 375 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. That will make a medium rare to medium lamb chop, depending on the thickness. If you like them cooked a little bit less, then back it down to six minutes. If you like your chops cooked a little bit more, bump it up to 10. Now, this searing method, ooh, yeah, brown food. Do you think this would work on a pork chop? Yes, it would. Do you think this would work on a steak? Yes, it would. Do you think it would work on a chicken breast? Why, yes, it would. Anything that you want to sear on the outside, this method works. All right. Gorgeous. All right, now, just because we have lamb chops browned on two sides, does that mean they're done? What about this fat side on there? I mean, I really like to pick up a lamb chop lollipop and chew on this gristly seared fat. Hello, yes I do. And I do it unabashedly. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna brown, we're gonna brown the fat side of those chops as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We are paying attention to every detail. Okay. Yes, chef facial happening. Mmm, so delicious. Smells so good. Ah, uh, are we talking deliciousness there? Is that brown food? Is that delicious? Yeah, it is. So we're gonna take that out and put it right back there. And I can hear already, ah, there was raw lamb chops on that tray. Well, guess what? The whole thing is going into the oven, so everybody's gonna be cooked. It's okay. Save your dishes, save your time. All right, there we go. All right, we're browning and we're browning. What are we doing? We're browning. We're making brown food, why? Because it tastes good. All right, not quite yet. Ah, oh, look at that baby, gorgeous. All right, yes, this is what I'm talking about. Look at that, yes. All right. One or two more seconds on these guys. Oh yeah. Now, if you see your pan turning colors in some places, some pans have hot spots, rotate your pan. Just like when you put things in the oven, you can, so, I'm also seeing a lot of smoke. It's getting a little hot in here. So I'm gonna turn my pan off because I'm about done here. Okay. And so then we're gonna do this. We say, thank you for coming. All right, now, do you see this crud on the bottom of the pan? You can go ahead and give your pan a quick rinse. We're gonna start over again. So dry your pan out. If you have any little drops of water in there and you put oil in there, what could happen when they heat up is they could spatter at you and that would hurt. We don't want that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my burner back on. 
olive oil. All right, and we're going to repeat this process. I'm waiting. It takes patience to cook well sometimes. Sometimes you just got to do nothing. All right, let's give it a try. Nope, not yet. Gonna wait. All right, we're almost there. So we put one in, we're gonna let it keep going a little bit, and then we're gonna move on. So I'm gonna repeat this same process with the rest of my chops and then all of these bad boys going in my preheated oven. Finished. All right, thank you for coming. All right, so mm, my lamb chops gorgeously browned, beautifully aromatic. I'm just gonna brush this last little group with a little bit more of my rosemary garlic lemon zest olive oil mixture. And I'm gonna get these guys in the oven for 10 minutes. While these guys are in the oven, I'm going to get my salad prepped. My lamb chops have been in the oven for about five minutes. I'm just gonna take a little look-see at them. I mean, just because we put things in the oven doesn't mean out of sight, out of mind. I'm gonna check them. Ooh. The smell that just came out of that oven when I opened it, mm, hit me in the face with deliciousness. So I'm looking at my chops. I'm giving them a little bit of a poke and I'm going to rotate my tray. They've got about five minutes left. And so in the meantime, I'm going to get to work on my salad situation. I love big meat with a salad. I like it when the salad sits on top of the big meat when it's really hot and it kind of wilts the salad. So the dressing and the meat juices and the garlic and the olive oil, all that stuff come together. So that's why when my lamb chops come out of the oven, I'm gonna plunk them immediately or really quickly right onto a salad. So I have some baby washed arugula here. Um, and I had it in the fridge under a damp paper towel so it stays nice and fresh and crisp and delicious. I love an arugula because it's sort of a bitter green. It's a little bit of peppery, it's crunchy, it's mouthwateringly refreshing, it's great. Um, and it stands up to stuff, but it also wilts ever so gently. I have radicchio. I was like, don't be radicchio. We call this, it's a green, even though it's red, it still falls in the greens family. So it's got a little stalk in here. I'm gonna cut this guy right in half through the middle and then I'm gonna cut it in quarters. I'm gonna cut that, that stocky thing from the middle right out. And I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna do what's called a chiffonade. That's a knife cut. And it means like just kind of thin ribbons like this. Radicchio also is a lovely bitter green and it adds a lovely amount of color to this whole situation. So, and it really stands up to the gaminess of lamb chops beautifully. All right, so there we go. All right, radicchio. All right, we're gonna cut these stalks out. Thank you for coming. Now, I have some fennel here. I love a fennel. We're gonna add a little bit of fennel to my salad. It's crunchy, sort of like celery, but it's sweet and tastes like black licorice. 
So all of these top guys, I'm gonna take off. I don't need them for today. I might save a few of these little wispy things that we call fennel fronds. We can garnish with those. They taste delicious. They're absolutely edible. If you wanna save things like this for your stock pot, if you're a stock maker at home, these are an amazing thing to throw in your stock pot. So now my fennel, I'm gonna cut it in half. So I'm going to cut out the stalk that's in the middle there, just like I did with my radicchio. Thank you for coming. And I'm gonna slice this guy feeny, 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 really thin. These guys are sweet, they're crunchy, they add a lot of moisture. They add a bunch of interestingness with the sort of licorice-y sort of flavor. And they go very nicely with lamb chops. So here we go, good. So get this guy cut as well. Feeny, 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 we want these guys cut. Thin, thin, thin. Knife cuts, always important. Okay, one more time. Cut out the thick stock. Thank you for coming. All right, see these guys come apart like a celery or like an onion, I guess, if you will. Thin, thin, thin slices. All right, same thing. We're gonna just finish this guy up. All right. Now, we have sort of the salad-y part of our salad done. Let's add some exciting parts of our salad. So, we have one small red onion. I love a raw red onion. This is like every time I put a raw red onion in something, I think of my colleague, Scott Conant. You know, he has a reputation for being the guy on Chopped that hates raw red onions. I love them. So, you know, it's really kind of funny. When I was competing on Chopped and Scott was judging, I left the raw red onions out. So um, I have my onion. I cut off the stem end. I left the hairy end on. And I'm going to use the tip of my knife and I'm gonna slice to the back, but not through the back. Really thin slices and all the slices are the same size. I mean, I realize this is going in a salad and we're not cooking it, but Knife cuts and size always matters. So look at this, we have an onion that's cut, but it's together. That's what the hairy end does. It holds everybody together. So there we go, we're gonna cut the hairy end off and then look what I have. I have a beautifully sliced red onion. Now, if you're not a fan of a red onion, you can certainly leave it out. You can add just a little bit, you can add a lot, you can do whatever you feel like here. I really like the sharp punctuation of a red onion in a salad, especially with all these big flavored bitter greens and things like that. I feel like it's really needed. All right, so one more time. The tip of our knife slice to the back, but not through the back. There we go. Hey, you get down. One more, one more, all the way to the edge. Cut the back off, thank you for coming. There we go, good. All right, look at this beautiful salad building up here. My lamb chops smell amazing. I'm gonna take them out of the oven while I finish up my salad. Ooh, mm, yum. All right, look at those beautiful babies. So I poke them and I can feel that they, you know, we think about protein when it's raw and it's very loosey-goosey and squishy. The more you cook protein, the firmer it gets. So I can poke it and I can feel that it's still really nice and soft in the middle, but it has some give. These are cooked to about medium rare right now. Absolutely perfect. Okay, let's just finish up the salad. Couple more quick little things. I have some galleta olives. We're going to sliver these. We're just gonna cut them into each one into about four and we'll do about seven or eight of these little olive slivers. They're kind of little salty punctuations. So we think about what's going on in our salad. We have peppery, refreshing, bitter arugula. 
We have crunchy, bitter radicchio, which is also red, so it brings a beautiful color. We have crunchy, sweet, very juicy fennel. So that brings another flavor point to our party. We have a sharp, raw red onion. And now we have some little black olive slivers, something very salty. And like when you taste it, you're like, whoa, olives and lamb chops go together so beautifully. In fact, all of this stuff goes together beautifully. Our lamb chops are the big money items. They're the showstopper. But the supporting cast of our salad also, very interesting, seemingly, oh, just a salad. You can go from like, meh, salad to, mmm, salad. That's what we're doing. All right, so there we go. And one more olive. Okay, there we go. Okay, olives in there. Now, remember these guys are zested lemons. Well, let's take the juice out of these guys and dress our salad with it. What do you think? All right, so we're gonna cut these guys in half. I have a little strainer because I don't want any seeds in my salad, so we'll just strain the juice out. We have two lemons that we're gonna take the juice out of. We used the zest to put on our lamb chops before we even cooked them. I love this little tool, it's called a reamer. Again, a low-tech solution, I love it. And I have a little strainer here. It just cuts the seeds out. If you don't have a little strainer and you don't mind seeds, knock yourself out. Or if you want to fish the seeds out afterwards. Or if you have one of those citrus squeezers that you open the whole thing. They all work. You know, we just want the juice. And fresh lemon juice here is really important. There's nothing like fresh lemon juice. And I mean, it's gotta be sort of squeezed to order because it's the most acidic and the most effective when it comes straight from the lemon. Even if you juice these lemons yesterday and save this juice overnight, it loses some of its pungency in the fridge overnight. So I, whenever I dress a salad with lemon juice, I squeeze it fresh to order. I'm gonna add all of the juice of that, those lemons in there. Two lemons, some salt, some olive oil. All right. Let's toss these guys around. Hmm. All right. There we go. Really get everybody in there. We want the salad dressed beautifully, but not in a soggy, soggy way. And I want to get those warm lamb chops on top of this salad ASAP. Let's taste it. Mmm. Really nice and bright, lemony, fresh. Mmm. That makes me excited. But I think I can do with a little bit more salt. Right now, it's a little bracingly on the lemon side. So when we're thinking of too acidic, we can add some salt to balance that out. Salt and acid, polar opposites, and we kind of want to meet in the middle. Think of the teeter-totter of polar opposites of flavors. That's what salt and acid are. All right. So look at this pretty salad. My knife cuts are all being shown off beautifully. Oh, perfect. Mm. So bright lemon, but got a good salt, nice olive oil in there. All right. Let's go ahead and put this out. So we want to do a nice big mound in the middle of our platter. There we go. I'm going to put a little towards the edge so I can set some lamb chops on there so they will start to wilt the salad a little bit. All right. Beautiful. So then let's just finish this guy up. Look at our gorgeous lamb chops. We're going to set them right on there. Right around on top of the salad. All right, let's have the bones getting some air, you know, like makes them look sort of architectural and very yummy. And also it's kind of like a natural handle that you want to pick up that guy and eat it. You know, it's like what I like to call a lamb chop lollipop. All right, look at that. They fit around there perfectly. So look at all of this delicious meat juice and all these like olive oil perfumed with all this deliciousness. Look what we're gonna do. 
pour it right over your meat on your salad. Oh, that's the money right there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. This is dinner for a crowd. It's big, it's fancy, it's rustic, it's delicious. Hmm, let's make sure we know it's delicious. Lamb chop lollipop on deck. Oh, yes, it's delicious. I feel the lemon, I feel the garlic, I feel the rosemary. I mean, mm, the big juicy lamb, it's succulent, it's juicy, it's delicious. I'm Ann Burrell, and I'm gonna finish my lamb chop lollipop over here. See you soon.